Let's talk boundaries. Many of us can recognize when a personal boundary has been crossed, but have no idea how to properly maintain them. Lucky for us, the author of The Book of Boundaries, Melissa Urban, is here. I'm so excited about this conversation. Okay, Melissa, we're happy to have you, and I want to talk about what is a boundary, yeah. if you can describe it for us, and why did you decide to write about them in this book? Yeah, so I define boundaries as limits that you set around how you allow other people to engage with you. Mm -hmm. So a boundary doesn't tell someone else what to do. It tells other people what I will do to keep myself safe and healthy and make the relationship better. During the pandemic, I saw a huge need for people to learn how to speak their boundaries. You know, work and kids and school all ran together mm -hmm. and people need, knew they needed them but didn't know how to say them. So I wanted to offer them some tips and scripts for setting those limits. Oh, I love that. I've thought about going on strike so many times yeah. as a mom. Like, how do I get out of this? <laughs> yes. Okay, so in the book, uh, you talk about the first boundary that you set yeah. and the reason why you, you wrote this book uh, continued after that. Why did you set that first boundary? I set my first boundary in a moment of panic mm -hmm. when I was in rehab for my drug addiction. Mm -hmm. I found myself at a party that I didn't belong at with people I didn't know, and I felt really unsafe, and the friend I was with didn't know how unsafe I felt. And in this moment of sheer desperation, a boundary tumbled out of my mouth. I can't be here, I need to go home. Mm -hmm. And I thought that boundaries were gonna make my life small and isolate me from the people I loved. And instead I found that it expanded my life beyond my wildest dreams, my friendships, my relationships, my sense of freedom. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, because then you're in a situation where you actually, people are respecting the way you want to live. Yes, and right? I was taking responsibility for my own feelings and needs, which felt really empowering. Oh my God, that's so empowering. So why is it important for all of us to start setting uh, more boundaries? And how do boundaries differ from like ultimatums or threats? Yeah, so a threat is really almost a punishment. It's a manipulation tactic designed to tell other people what to do. A boundary allows us to reclaim our time, our energy, our mental health, our sense of safety, and they're an invitation in your relationship to say, hey, I have this limit, you might not have realized it, I'm gonna share that with you clearly and kindly, and if you can meet me in this limit, our relationship is gonna be so much more trusting, respectful, open, I won't have dread or anxiety mm -hmm. or resentment. I think of boundaries as a real gift in any relationship. Okay, well, let's play a little game, okay? okay? I'm going to give you a scenario. You're going to teach us how to properly set a boundary using green, yellow, yes. and red. This is the method that you mention in your book. So what, how does that the method work first? And then I'll get into the scenario number one. So your green boundary is the gentlest and the most kind, assuming the other person just didn't realize you had a limit. Yes. Your yellow boundary is going to be more direct, still kind. Mm -hmm. And then the red boundary is where you are going to take the action you need to hold the boundary. Okay, yeah. very clear. Scenario number one, your parents or in-laws frequently show up at your home unannounced. Yeah. It bothers you. So how are we setting that boundary with them? So the green boundary is, hey, Carol, before you come over, please call us and give us about an hour's notice. You don't have to justify, you don't have to over explain, you just set the boundary, that's perfectly kind. Okay. The yellow boundary is when Carol knocks on the door and she hasn't called, you open the door and you say, oh Carol, you didn't call first, this isn't a good time. Would you like to come by after dinner or should we schedule time to visit tomorrow? Okay. The red boundary is Carol's knocking and you don't answer the door. You are holding that limit because you have already expressed it at this point. Yeah. Carol showing up at your doorstep unannounced is just plain rude. Oh my gosh, I want to go right to the red. I know. <laughs> but I know that I would probably have heart palpitations about it. Let's do another scenario and we're yeah. going to talk a, a little bit more about that. Yeah. Your coworker loves to gossip to you about other clients, other colleagues, and your boss. You listen to it to be nice, but you find it a bit distracting and gossip, you're just not into it. Yeah. What do you do? So the green boundary is, oh, I don't like talking about Carol when she's not here, mm -hmm. but tell me about your vacation. How was Disney? So changing the subject gives yeah, them a bit good. of a reprieve and says, I'm not willing to engage. The yellow boundary might be interrupting the conversation and saying, oh, I don't like participating in conversations where we're talking about people behind their back and you try to change the subject or you leave the conversation. The red boundary is simply, excuse me and you leave because you can't mm. tell them not to gossip, but you can remove yourself from the conversation. Can we talk about awkwardness? Can we yeah. talk about how you've got to now go see Carol the next day or see your coworker the next day and, and how that will be an awkward space for you because of you 
setting a boundary? It might be. Very often, though, these conversations go way better than you imagine. The person says, oh, okay, I understand, and respects your limit. If it is awkward or they do try to make you feel guilty, that is unearned guilt. You haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. And your boundary is really going to improve the dynamic with your coworker. Mm -hmm. So I remind people how they choose to react to your boundary is not your business and not your responsibility. They are grown adults capable of managing their own feelings, yeah. and this is a healthy limit, and your needs and feelings matter too. Your comfort matters too. We all have to remember that. Oh, I love that so much. Thank you, Melissa.